Hi everyone, welcome to another tutorial video. This time round we're going to take a look at the installation and usage of the Fallout 4 Hotkeys mod by Registrator2000. You may know this mod author from other mods such as Visible Weapons, Companions, Command and also Outfit Switcher. So the first thing that we're going to do, like you should do with every mod, is check out the mod page. So if we scroll down here, we can see a list of the features that the hotkeys mod provides. So we can hotkey any piece of equipment, hotkey any console command, and hotkey any in-game Papyrus function. There's also the options here to lower your weapon on demand, command your companion, which involves using the companion command mod by Registrator2000, split the grenade and melee keys, hide show the hood, toggle fly cam, freeze time, etc, and play animations. Now this link here will take you to the script that you need for that. There's also the option here for a fifth dialogue um, reply. We won't look at that today, but we will look at the animations. And there is a host of other things that this mod can do. For example, activate other mods like bullet time will take cover. Again, by Registrator2000. So moving on down to the installation section, we have a choice of two versions here. We've got a full version and a light version. Now the difference between the two is that the full version includes a simple in-game hotkey manager and this will be added to the aid section in your inventory and that's the version that we're going to look at to install in this video. Now the hotkeys can be managed in several different ways. With using the full version which is what we're going to take a look at, you can assign your hotkeys using the hotkey manager and this assigns the keys Z, G, B, Y, H, N, U and those are bound to slots 1 to 7. We'll take a look exactly what this line means in a moment when we install the mod. There is the other option though of going into the hotkey ini file which is added into your data folder. Again we'll take a look at this later on and you can manually assign certain keys to certain actions etc. Again we'll take a look at this further down the line in the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and download a version of the mod. So we need to go to the download section. There's several options in here. We're going to go for the full version. So let's just download that manually. And you'll see it pop up and start downloading your bottom left, depending on what browser you're using. So I'm going to right-click on this, show in folder. Unzip this with Wimra. There we go. And open up the folder that it created. Now to install this, you can't do it through Nexus Mod Manager because it won't handle um, some of the file types and some of the installation directories that this mod requires. So all you need to do here, you've got two command files and install and uninstall. So if you want to install the mod, you would click this one to install it. We're going to double click here, click run. And as you can see, hotkeys successfully enabled. Press any key to continue. And that is the mod installed. What you then need to do, however, is go across to your Nexus Mod Manager or whatever program you use to manage your mods with. Go to your plugins and make sure that the Fallout 4 Hotkeys ESP is ticked. Because you've not installed it with Nexus Mod Manager or your mod organizer, etc., it won't automatically have ticked this ESP. It will recognize it, but it won't have activated it. So you just have to make sure you've got it active. So just before we launch the game, let's make a note of what exactly we've done with that installation. So if you head along to your Fallout 4 installation directory, the one with the data folder in, and go into that, we can scroll down here. We'll see the ESP probably in here, the hotkeys ESP. But if we go down a bit further, we will find the hotkeys ini file. Now this is important because this is one of the files that we're going to need to possibly configure some of the hotkeys. So I'm just going to open this up in Notepad++ so we have that later and ready and available. And you can see here, there's a bit of coding in here just to tell you what things are. So at the moment, set up by default, if I press F2 on the keyboard, it will toggle menus, that's a console command. And F3 will do TFC, which is toggle free cam or fly cam. And that again is a, another console command. And the rest is set up here. So we can see hotkey one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, letters Z, G, B, Y, H, N, and U, which is what we saw on the mod page earlier. Okay, so we are now in game. So if I open up the Pit Boy and go to the aid section, you can see here at the top we've got the hotkey manager. Now, the positioning of the hotkey being at the top of the aid section here is configurable in the menu settings, so you can change it if you really want to. So if I go into here, we've got a new menu. Now, with this menu, we can see that we've got previous page, next page, so there is a host of slots available here. 
And then we've got modify one, modify two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm going to modify slot one. And we've got here set assignment, clear assignment, and go to the previous or next slot or move slot backwards. So let's go and set an assignment here and we'll get a message. Equip or select the item you want to bind to the selected hotkey or reopen hotkey manager to cancel. So let's click OK and I'm going to do the basic thing of adding a weapon here to the hotkey. So at the moment I've got this sniper rifle equipped so I'm going to select the laser pistol. That hotkey has been saved. Let's just go back to the, the um, sniper rifle so we can see this hotkey work. Let's go into first person. This is the sniper rifle. So hotkey slot one is Z on the keyboard and let's press Z now. And there we go, the laser pistol is equipped. And it's as simple as that. And I'll point out at this point, as you can probably see if I hover over dog meat here, I've got A as command, which means I'm actually using a Xbox One controller to do all of my main movements. But now I have some additional hotkeys on the keyboard, which for me is a great thing that this mod provides. I like having that additional set of hotkeys on the keyboard. I did it all the way through my playthroughs in Skyrim. And I'm glad I've now got that opportunity in Fallout 4 as well. Okay, so I've set up some other console, not console commands, sorry, other hotkeys using the in-game item menu that you have, the hotkey manager, and also using the ini file. And I'll show you my ini file in a minute so you can see what I've done. I've also installed the mod that commands companions and bullet time as well. So we'll do the companion one first. We've got dog meat over there. And the power of this mod is I can pretty much press a key on the keyboard and do some commands. So if I now at the moment press G hey, and then press go, go A for go, dog meat will move over there. Normally you'd have to like hover over him, get into command. But now if I press G dog again, move out. I shout at the companion and uh, can get him to move pretty much wherever I want. Dog meat. Hey. Get into position. Which is pretty nice. That means I can command him at any distance whatsoever and uh, just get him to do what I want. There's also other things where I can toggle the distance that he keeps to me, etc. And this very nice one, if I do Control G, opens up the trading menu, which for me is very, very useful indeed. I hate having to go through the dialogue options and stuff with companions to trade things with them. It's really, really annoying. But now, just with Control G, there yeah, we're straight into trading with dog meat. Which is very very handy indeed the other one that i've set up is show menu sleep wait menu which will instantly if i press y on the keyboard open up the wait menu so i can just wait from wherever i am which is fantastic because trying to find a seat sometimes is really really annoying although it's immersive it's um, a little bit annoying so this is great that i can just press a key now on the keyboard and get that up and the other one that I've set up is with bullet time. So if I press my VATS key now, LB on the controller, I go into slow-mo, which is awesome. A bit of bullet time, which is fantastic. And I much prefer that over VATS sometimes because I find VATS is a little bit overpowered. You've got VATS to vents and things in VATS. And uh, it's, it's a bit, I just find it a bit fiddly sometimes. I do prefer bullet time. It's uh, a lot nicer. And that's also configurable to a certain extent as well in the menu. And if you use bullet time, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. And the last but not least, the most favorite of the hotkeys is the dancing one. So I've set that up on N, I believe. There we go. And there goes Frank off dancing as the sun sets in the Commonwealth. Doesn't he look lovely? Throwing some shapes about all over the place. Absolutely fantastic, Frank. You go for it, mate. You go for it. And then, obviously, I've also set up a hotkey to stop him dancing. Because sometimes it's a little bit inappropriate. Like so. And that is pretty much some of the nice, cool, awesome things you can do with the hotkey mod. Now, there are other things. And I will show you my ini file in a second so you can see exactly what I set up here. Um, for example, actually the default ones, F2 goes into toggle menu, so you'll see the crosshair disappear here, like so. There's not much you can see with this because I have a very clean hood anyway. And then F3 goes into free cam. Um, I believe the SUCSUM, which is S-U-C-S-M, is set at 3, which means the free cam won't be too fast, but it'll still be quite quick. So let's go F3. So we're in free cam now, and we can move about. 
Now, because I was in first person, Frank is going to disappear. So let's just press F3 again. Go into third person. And if you're in third person, this means that your character stays present. And you can pan around him like so. Let's just try and not crash the game by going to heavy load areas. But there we go. That is free cam. It's quite a nice pace, actually, Suck some 3. Um, I, I usually use point two actually, for armor showcases and things. But it's, it's quite nice at 3. I means you can get around quite easily and go, ooh, I wonder what's over here and stuff. So that's quite nice. So that is some more of the powerful things you can do with the hotkeys. So let's just jump in and take a look at that ini file and see exactly what I've set up. And I'll also post down in below some of the links I used to get the information for these commands from. They're all related actually to the hotkey mod. Okay, so this is my hotkey ini file. Um, I didn't set up pretty much all of these. These are as default. But then we've got Xenon L1, which is the left bumper or L1 on your controller. So if you're using a PS4 controller, I don't know if you can do that on PC actually, I assume you can, it would be L1. And then L1 is obviously the left bumper. So L2 would be left trigger, etc. for Xbox One. And where I got this command from is off the comment section of the hotkey mod file. I'll show you that page and obviously links will be down below. Then we've got show menu sleep weight menu, which is how I set up Y to be the weight menu. N and U here are setting up the dancing. And then down here are a list of commands for your companion. Now these were installed when I installed the companion mod. What happens is it merges the hotkey ini files and adds these to the bottom of the list, which is very nice. It's all done through a command prompt as the hotkey mod was as well. And up top here, we've got the default ones that I showed you as well. So we've got TM for toggling menus and TFC for the free cam. And this speed one here, suck some three, is the speed at which the free cam was traveling at. So there we go, that's pretty much it. Obviously you can expand this further. So for example, you can see here in the commands one, it's a more advanced form of hotkeys. You can use shift plus G or control plus G to do other commands as well. And you can extend this even further by adding other keys to the end of this here. And I'll show you a link as well in the description, which will show you how to do that. So I'm just quickly gonna show you the two pages that I used. We've got a list of possible keybinds here. Again, these will be down in the description below. And here we've got the controller keybinds, which I used for the um, bullet time. You can also equip stuff to the mouse, etc., etc. the numpad. Loads of things that you can do here with the mod. And then if we go to the next one, which is the commands for popular actions, it just gives you an example of some of the actions that you can do inside Fallout 4 that you might want to do. So we've got here the dancing one at the bottom. I've also got um, saving the game as well, which is quite nice. And obviously switching to your fists. And I believe there's a lower weapons one somewhere as well. But I can't, oh, there we go, lower weapons on demand, which is quite nice as well. So yeah, that is pretty much the Fallout 4 hotkeys mod, it is a very powerful tool and I suggest you take the time to install it if you really do find yourself needing a few extra keys here and there and use a lot of weapons, armors, etc. inside of the game. Say for example if you go to a town and you like to put on your casual wear, you know, for a bit of extra bartering, um, talent, etc. Then this is definitely a mod you should take a look at. So that was a quick look at the installation and setup of the Fallout 4 hotkey mod. If you've liked the video, please do drop it a like. And if you'd like the look of the mod, you'll find a link down in the description below. I also recommend you check out the mod author's other mods, as there are some that go hand in hand with this one and just increase their functionality slightly with this mod. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Stay frosty in the Commonwealth, and I'll see you next time.